another factor that can affect the climate of an ecosystem is life itself. Believe it or not, the presence of life will actually change the abiotic conditions of the ecosystem, including the humidity and the temperature. And it can do this in several ways, but just to start off, water is one of the ways that it does this because water is a part of life and there are some life forms that have mechanisms to use water to help them cool down. This is called evapotranspiration or, or evaporative cooling. And it's when plants or animals, for example, put water on their surface, animals will sweat, plants will just let the evap evapotranspiration through their leaves. And basically what happens is that water covering their surface is it starts absorbing the heat from the, our body, for example. And when water does not like to change temperature. It's a property of water. It's called specific heat. It takes a lot to make water change temperature because water is has bonds inside of it, a chemistry of water. It's called hydrogen bonds, which hold water together really well. So it makes it harder for water to uh, move around and therefore to heat up. And so it takes a lot to make water heat up. So when it finally does, it absorbs a lot of energy. So when you make water evaporate, all the energy that was in your skin, your heat, goes with the water and that cools you down. Plants and animals will do that and to help them cool down. Now, you see how in the rainforest, in the picture in the bottom, that actually makes a huge difference for the ecosystem because at the end of the afternoon, after a whole day of sunlight, the plants are evapotranspirating so much that there's a whole fog over the trees and that actually helps the trees and it changes the ecosystem. That's actually one of the reasons why it rains so much in the rainforest. Ironically, life is actually what causes the, now the rain that exists there. If you were to remove the trees, it would be a lot drier than it actually is. So light would change the climate. Besides, water is also a greenhouse gas, remember? So when life puts out this water into the atmosphere, it actually helps hold the heat in the atmosphere. All that moisture changes the atmosphere and makes it hotter. Uh, it makes it keep the heat for longer, especially at night. So that also will change things. Water is basically acting like a greenhouse gas. Speaking of which, that's another way in which life changes the ecosystem through the greenhouse gases. Because remember, during decomposition and cell respiration, life will produce carbon dioxide. Also, during decomposition and digestion, life will also produce methane. Now, methane, carbon dioxide, and the water, which we just talked about, are all greenhouse gases. So the presence of life will add greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, which will actually make the atmosphere also a little more humid. By the way, plants are trappers of greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide. So they are perhaps the only natural way by which the ecosystem will trap these uh, greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. That and the oceans and the algae that are working on the oceans and a lot of the carbon dioxide also go, ends up dissolved in the water of the oceans of the world. But if it wasn't for the plants, the oceans and the algae in the oceans, carbon dioxide levels would be even higher than they are right now. So life can add things to the atmosphere. It can also take things away from the atmosphere. And there's one more way. Life also changes the way that heat is either absorbed or reflected off the ground. If you have a lot of plants in the ground, they will obviously be absorbing the energy from the sun. So that means more energy will be kept by the ecosystem than it will basically reflect back to space. Meanwhile, underneath the canopy of the trees, it will be nice because the shade of the trees will block most of the sunlight. And above the trees, what energy doesn't get absorbed will be reflected back and it will be warmer too. But if you were to remove the trees, the situation would be completely different. Look at a desert, for example. Without trees to evapotranspirate, without trees for to, in life to produce greenhouse gases, and without water, all that ends up happening is that the, during the day, the ground gets blasted by sunlight, but since there's no trees to absorb that energy, it just reflects back to space. So during the night, it's really cold in the desert. Life itself can change the, the temperature, the climate of the ecosystem. And if you change the life, therefore, you're going to change the climate. And that's why it's very important to be careful when we, as humans with what we do to the ecosystem. By removing the life from the ecosystem, we are affecting the amount of water, the amount of greenhouse gases, the amount of power to trap greenhouse gases, and the amount of energy that's being absorbed by the soil or reflected. All of these things can have several repercussions for the ecosystem, and it's one of the ways in which humans are also affecting the environment. Remember, life also helps modulate the climate of ecosystems.